So I'm president of a large community college of 22,000 near Charlotte, North Carolina in the USA. And our primary delivery is online education, not because we meant to do it, but because that's where the students wanted to go. Um, and we, our largest program is college transfer. Our primary mission is workforce development. And we offer basic skills to adults, apprenticeship, vocational programs, public services, the gamut. And so we are highly uh, flexible. We call ourselves nimble. Um, and so we, we think we've been doing a really great job of uh, managing the future with our students. However, what we're finding is that um, we do need to have more transdisciplinary perspectives, customized and personalized curricula and contextualized knowledge um, and relevant and effective. So for the complex world, but we've got a new problem that I've never seen. And I've been in this business now through uh, a career in Florida and now a career in North Carolina. There's always been a gender gap in higher education participation between the sexes. In 1972, the US government passed laws to promote gender equity in education because there was a 12% gap between men and women's achievement for a bachelor's degree. That gap closed by 1982 and the trend lines for men fell and women's increased. Prior to 1979, more men enrolled in higher education than women. To address the problem of access, there were federal grants to U.S. community college, colleges to help displace homemakers, mostly women, prepare for entering college. The curriculum was transdisciplinary, customized, personalized, and life-changing in its effectiveness. I mentored my college Women's Center grant for 25 years with great success. Over the past decade, I've grown, grown more concerned about the downward trend of men's participation in higher education in North Carolina and the U.S not just from an equity viewpoint, but from the likelihood that this trend is and will impact the rising income equality, the future of marriage and families. Our graduates experience transformation as they become sustainable wage earners and successful in their careers. These students impact their own families and increase the prosperity of the region by millions of dollars in additional wages every year. The success is not limited to either gender, but the decrease in the enrollment rates is driven by the absence of men. I'm certainly not alone in my question of where are the men? The New York, the New York Times special section on predicting the next 20 years also addressed the college going rates of men saying that it is stalled for reasons that mystify experts. Author Justin Wolfer submitted that the rising gap in higher education may turn out to be one of the most transformative trends of our time. Men's lack of participation in higher education is an historical anomaly. The trend has always been that each cohort achieves more than the generation before. What is puzzling is that this disinvestment by men is happening when the career and financial benefits of having a college degree have grown dramatically and the financial support to attend college has also grown. College graduates earn approximately a million dollars more over a lifetime than a high school graduate. We also know that most well-paying jobs and careers in the 21st century require post-secondary education. This trend is not unique to the US. Women 25 to 34 years old from all 38 members of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development are more likely to have a tertiary degree than men. The OECD reports that this data is astonishing. People can't believe it. Hannah Rosen, author of The End of Men, reports it is the strangest and most profound change of the century, even more so because it is unfolding in a similar way pretty much all over the world. The pandemic has affected both sexes enrollment at college, but more men than women have opted to stay out of college. We do not know why. We know that education does not simply expand your horizons and help you develop your potential to be wiser. It makes you healthier and wealthier. It makes us better parents, citizens, and community leaders. We already see the future in our daughters and granddaughters. They are choosing to pursue their careers first, marry later, if at all, and have children later, if they choose to have any. Our society is already being changed for the better by improved educational attainment by women. As girls, they do better in schools than boys. Young women are predominant valedictorians of their high school graduating classes. In countries around the world, 
that suppress education for girls, we see women actively fighting for the privilege to go to school. Meanwhile, the developed nations in the world are seeing a growing number of men not graduate from high school, not enroll in college, and if they do, not finish in numbers that are astounding. Just as we address the gap in college enrollment in the 70s for women, we need to address the lack of participation of men in this decade. The experts are mystified and surprised. What programs do we need? Perhaps something similar to the 70s approach that addressed transdisciplinary issues, customized and personalized curricula and contextualized knowledge and becoming more relevant and effective in our com increasingly com complex world. Should we create special programs similar to the displaced homemaker programs personalized to men? What do we need to do to attract and retain men in higher education? We need to address the male college crisis sooner than later. So um, this is not a problem I expected to find or, and as I was doing research about what I was gonna talk about, I thought this is maybe the most urgent issue I have as a community college leader, as an educational leader in North Carolina and the US. And now I see it by doing the research that is happening around the world. Our, we have more men living at home with their parents than are in the workforce. So uh, this is a change, the, the, uh, and I think it possibly could go back to one of the uh, panelists from a prior panel where we talked about fear. And these guys uh, not doing well in grade school, not graduating from high school are left to their own devices of uh, gaming and other kinds of things. So I think we've got to change up and bring back uh, the men that we so much need in our society.